I'm Chloe D. Frost, and you are listening to Athernia. If you haven't yet listened to the previous episode, you should do so. In this episode, you'll get to see a brief glimpse of what Athernia is about. In the next several episodes, you'll get to understand how it all began. I hope you enjoy it. Episode 1 Prologue She didn't have much time. She could feel it clutching at her heart, slowly slithering beneath her skin, spreading deeper and deeper with every breath she took. The stabbing pain in her chest lasted longer and longer every day, yet the worst pain wasn't caused by the sickness, but the knowledge. She was the only one that knew. She stared at the cold metal walls with a desire to break them down. As hard as titanium itself, they wouldn't budge. No matter how hard she clawed at it, hammered and kicked, she couldn't create a single scratch or dent. And to make matters worse, pushing mana into the walls to power a spell was near impossible. The alloy had a high mana resistance. She imagined placing her palms in front of her and pushing outwards like opening double doors. She could picture the metal bending and twisting, creaking as if crying. It would slide away, creating a hole for her to pass through. Yes, that's how she would have done it. At her prime, even platinum would have shifted in her wake. She was a transmutation magic master. This wall would have been history if she could still use her magic. If only she could still use her magic. But it was no longer her own. The ink growing inside her had tainted her mana. It resisted and twirled chaotically. She could no longer control it. She wanted to cry, to sob, but she was not the type to cry. Instead, she swore under her breath. Her fist clenched so hard her nails drew blood. The sharp pain made her look down at her palms. The blood was black and refused to flow. Her eyes traced the black veins branching under her skin, traveling up her arms. The flesh around them was slowly losing every bit of color, turning snow white. She averted her gaze to the floor. She was disgusted. However, the shiny metal floor only reflected her own face back at her. She cringed. Her eyes had lost their shine. The pupils had shrunk so much they were barely visible. Her face was plagued by dark bags and cracked blue lips. The hair on her head was just as lifeless as straw. It had stopped growing and was slowly decaying into shades of silver. She looked back at the walls, her eyes losing their focus. Her mind was getting cloudier every day. The secret inside her head weighed on her, consuming her from inside. She stared into the distance, as if she could see beyond the walls. It was there, somewhere, right in that direction. Ashar University of Magic. He was there, doing what he always did completely unaware that she had been betrayed. What happened had not been an accident. She had stumbled upon a secret so dark and deep they would never let it out in the open. If only she could pass it on to him somehow. He needed to know. Everyone needed to know. He would believe her. He would not attribute her words to ramblings of a sick person. He would make sure her death would not be in vain. She closed her eyes, imagining his smile, his mischievous eyes, and undying curiosity. He gave her strength to hold on, to fight. She would cling on to life as long as she could. The thought of him cleared her head. These walls couldn't hold her prisoner. All of this was just a farce. They should have just killed her back then. Their own greed would cost them dearly. She would shatter the lie they encased everyone in, caged like animals in the false name of protection. If she didn't reveal the ugly truth, no one would. 
they would get away with their sins and continue to manipulate history. She needed to find a way to reveal it. But how? No one was allowed to see her. She couldn't get out. Her body was weak, her magic unusable. She could write him a letter, but it would never reach him. They would censor anything they deemed dangerous. Think. Just think. She screamed inside her head. You are an intelligent young woman. You can find a way. You can outwit them. They are still greatly underestimating you. They have no idea what you are truly capable of. She sighed. <sighs> That's right. She was more than just a great mage. Even without magic, she could wreak havoc. She would not sit still and count days to her untimely demise. She sat in silence, contemplating every option, devising a plan until her vision became foggy and her mind slipped back into the darkness. Next time, when her mind cleared, she would be ready to act. People are not born equal. Some are gifted with power, intelligence and status from the moment they leave their mother's womb. Others might spend their entire lives helplessly chasing what they had been denied from the start. Kiel, born as a non-mage in a world ruled by magic, had become painfully aware of this fact at a very early age. But Kiel, as he was now, was no longer the same. The old Kiel had died. Even now he remembered the deafening silence of his heart clearly. He was now someone, something else. This was clearly evident in the way he jumped around like a bouncing rubble ball, trying to avoid a stream of daggers, flying, swishing and slashing at him from all angles. Kiel put up several reflecting barriers to ward off the daggers. However, they were enchanted with a high-level piercing magic that prevented a change of velocity from external sources. They would bang against his barrier, the spell on the dagger causing strong waves of interference with his own. Shattering the barrier in a single hit, the impact would send the imposing dagger flying away from him. However, the rest of them would continue on their path of destruction. Kiel had no time to put up a stronger, more durable barrier. The weak barriers he was currently casting were quick and easy to put up. Unfortunately, he could not put up enough barriers to stop all daggers. Even he, as great of a mage as he was, couldn't create hundreds of barriers in a span of few short seconds. He doubted even Ellery herself would be able to do something of that magnitude. Kiel swore under his breath as a dagger wheezed right next to his head, creating a shallow, stinging cut on his cheek. The searing hot blood pumping through his veins took his already superb reflexes to the next level when faced with a question of life and death. Kiel looked to the other side of the hall, his eyes searching for Elaru. He was worried she would be in a worse condition than him, knowing how reckless she was. Elaru was able to forget her own mortality and disregard her pain in the midst of battle, fighting and enjoying the rush. The same reason why she often didn't notice just how much damage she was taking in the process. However, his worry was misplaced. Ellery didn't have a scratch on her, a few cuts on her clothes, though they drew no blood. Unlike him, who could attack both from the distance and from close range, Ellery almost exclusively and carelessly charged right into melee combat. Altogether it left an impression as if her luck was going to expire at any moment, like the next battle would be her last. Only by disregarding appearances and concentrating on the pure and simple truth could one realize that Elaru was a goddess of war. When she suffered the damage, it was because she deemed it necessary to get closer to her goal. Her movements, though appearing reckless, were precise and planned, 
comparable to flawless actions of a well-calibrated machine. Kiel let out a quiet tss. She made his blood boil. He hated being outperformed by her. She had become the determinant of his worth, the one he could compare with, the one who motivated him to exceed his own limits, his rival. He had to become better, faster, superior. Elleru dished out spells and avoided daggers with such speed and precision one would think she could stop time itself. The swirling blades hissed as they fell down upon her like rain, reflecting soft rays of light into her long carmine red hair. It flew around like it had a life of its own, ethereally shining in the darkness of the ruins as if it was glowing, giving that last push to the beauty of her playful dance into realms of otherworldly. Kiel was a high-ranking mage, his reaction speed and casting speed were both quite incredible. On the other hand, Elaru was on an entirely different level. Kiel swore again. We have no time to worry about that monster. He thought. Unlike her, he was on the defensive. Keeping himself alive was already a big deal in itself. Besides, it's not like she shared his sentiment. She was clearly enjoying the situation. She laughed, her face spread in an eerie, wide yet somehow still attractive grin. In the midst of battle was where Elaru felt the most alive. Kiel's mind filled with possibilities. How to defend, avoid, destroy. All the facts gathered inside his mind into strains of clear, coherent thought. Each dagger was enchanted with three different magic spells. Acceleration spell which allowed it to fly around swiftly, a piercing spell that negated outside attempts of changing the velocity, and a protection spell that rendered attempts to destroy it meaningless. There were a few hundred of them, and each had three high-level spells cast on it. Sustaining that many simultaneous high-level spells was too much for any single mage, which meant that daggers had a certain degree of autonomy and were not drawing their power from the mage himself. They drew their power from crystallized mana. The mage prepared the mana days beforehand, maybe even weeks. Which means if he could shatter the mana crystal powering them, the daggers would lose their enchantments, making them just regular daggers. And the normal daggers were no threat to a mage of his level. Can't defend. Unable to avoid. All that was left is to destroy them before they destroyed him. He smirked. Pinpointing the source of mana was easy, especially since they needed a lot of it to sustain them. He spread his mind like it was a gentle wave or a veil touching the magic of the daggers. Hundreds of small lights blossomed inside his head giving a presence to the intangible magic brewing inside the daggers around him. He raised his arms in front of his face to protect it in case he couldn't shoot down all of the daggers before they reached him. His body was protected by enchanted gear, but his head was bare. With icy tempest pulsating through his eyes, he started his offense. Dozens of high-density mana bolts spiraled and separated from his aura, mashed into existence with the sole purpose of destruction. Silently they honed in on the daggers. With incredible speed, achievable only through the lack of mass and perfect accuracy, they collided with targeted mana crystals. The show of magic bloomed like a reflection of the storm hiding behind his eyes. Magic rained down on him. When his bolts collided with the crystal, a small explosion cracked and shattered it, creating a shower of beautiful mana sparks, turning solid matter into fluid vapor. Some of the bolts even pierced through the target, taking out multiple daggers with one well-aimed mana bolt. The air was crackling with glowing fireworks. Daggers shined like silver stars, glittering brightly just before their magic broke and they fell down to the floor, 
clattering and turning to nothing more than useless scraps of metal. His magic was beautiful. He could tell that much even without being able to see magic. But he still craved her approval. The admiration and delight shining through her eyes down to the depths of his core. Unfortunately, she didn't even spare one look at him, as if he wasn't there at all. There was still a whirlwind of weaponry in the air around Kiel. He had managed to shoot down enough of them to rise his survival chances significantly. Despite that, blinded by the fireworks, he almost suffered a severe injury. He jumped backwards just in time. The sturdy cloth had torn from the force, leaving him with a new shallow cut on his thigh. He swore for not being as adept at evasion as Ellery was. However, the cut was worth it. He had lowered the number of daggers considerably. He should have no trouble ending the next batch now. Just as Kiel was about to launch his finishing blow, Daggers stopped in mid-air and reversed their direction of movement away from Kiel. In that short moment, a brief sense of achievement and pride washed over him. The mage pulled back his daggers to avoid their destruction, until a potent thought flashed across his mind, quieting all others. Elaru. His eyes quickly darted towards her, confirming his suspicions. The daggers weren't retreating. They changed their target to Elaru. She got too close to the enemy mage, threatening his well-being. The terror taking over the mage was radiating off of him in waves. Kiel could feel its intensity through his mana. Elaru's abilities were a perfect match for this type of battle. Her aura was so thick, it influenced all the daggers that came in contact with it. The density of her mana interfered with the spells cast onto the daggers, disorienting and weakening them. Such daggers were inadequate, they couldn't possibly hurt a fighter of her caliber. She didn't even consider them a threat, it seemed like she ignored them completely and returned fire to the enemy directly. In that regard, it was understandable why enemy was starting to panic. However, Ignoring Kiel was a massive miscalculation. Kiel readied himself. Since he didn't need to avoid the daggers anymore, his spellcasting speed increased greatly. A cruel smile appeared on his face, even more chilling than the ice in his eyes. This battle was over. A wide, bright ray of light emerged from Kiel's spread hand and flashed towards the mage disintegrating everything in its path in a sizzling and zapping high-pitched sound. Giving Kiel enough time to cast a high-level light beam spell was a fatal mistake. The protection spell on the daggers might be high-level, but when faced with a higher-level spell, it would inevitably break. Time seemed to slow down as daggers standing in its wake disintegrated into nothingness leaving almost no sign of their existence, not even little fragments of metal, not even dust. The only proof was a smell of melted metal spreading through the stale, moldy air. The eyes of the mage widened in a realization of his imminent demise, horror seeping through them as he recognized he had no time to defend against it. His full focus was already spent on his fight with Elaru. The beam light illuminated Elaru's face. Her eyebrows twitched in annoyance, her mouth morphing into a frown. Kiel felt no gratification from it, for when he understood the source of her displeasure, it was already too late to stop. He had failed to take into account the state of their surroundings. They were fighting in the middle of Zarian ruins. An ancient temple of crumbling rock couldn't possibly endure the power of their battle. As if the pulse from the beam blew away the last straw keeping it together, the ceiling above and the floor below them crumbled in unison. The walls around them caved in almost simultaneously, showering all three of them with dense rock as they fell down into the basement. 
As Kiel raised his hands upwards, his beam drilling a hole through the building before he revoked the spell. As he prepared to defend against the avalanche of rock, one question reawakened deep inside him like a rekindling a flame. How did I get into this mess? How did he, Kiel Rhoda, a son of a noble family of first-class mages, end up in such a situation? His position in the family was not important enough to have people after his head, and yet he was still wealthy enough to lead an easy, comfortable, though boring life. In all his 18 years of life, he had never been in more peril than what he had been put through in the last few weeks. How could his life change so dramatically in such a short period? He had asked himself that same question countless times over the course of the last few weeks. And no matter how many times he had asked, the answer stayed the same. Calamity, thy name is Elero. Thank you for listening. How did you like the prologue? Which part did you find the most enticing? The story with the mysterious woman or the battle? Let me know in the comments. In the future, Athernia episodes will be released once a week. However, to commemorate the release of Athernia, I uploaded a few more episodes for you to enjoy. Next time on Athernia, Episode 2 how it all began. It had been a calming, enjoyable ride. Kiel Rhoda didn't know it back then, but this ride would be the last bit of real peace he would feel in a long, long time. She was still there, staring right at him. Suddenly, he felt a presence, an aura, foreign mana. His eyes widened, it appeared out of nowhere. <laughs>